So my name is Professor Mira Agar. I'm a palliative medicine physician. I work at Liverpool Hospital and I have an academic appointment at the University of Technology, Sydney. And it's my pleasure really to explore with you about being a clinician researcher and um, hopefully share with you my passion about what's really special about research in the clinic. The research questions in the clinic really are driven by patients and improving outcomes it gives us a really powerful way to give our patients a voice and ensure that voice is heard. It really supports a culture of inquiry within your clinical area and that I think has tangible benefits well beyond the research in itself. An inquiring team who strives to do better really is a focus on trying to find innovative ways to improve outcomes for patients and make sure that they are providing contemporary clinical care. And I think it also allows us as clinicians to focus on research questions which are derived from our own practice. And these are often public interest questions which really actually would not be conducted otherwise. And so clinician researchers are really the driving force for solving those wicked problems within clinical practice. So what is the, the power of clinician researchers? I think a, a true clinician researcher will be really passionate about the questions which will make a true difference to their patients. One of the things that really does motivate you when research, as we all know, um, has its challenging moments, you know, that protocol or that project where you get to a, a sticking point, seeing patients is actually one of the best motivators to keep beavering away to finish your study or design the next study or resubmit that grant application that's been rejected a few, a few times. Research being embedded in clinical environments improves our care and that cycle of improvement really drives us to look for the next question. And I think it really gives you this bird's eye view from the idea to the inception, the dissemination of results and translation. And you as a clinician researcher can be a part of all of that um, journey and see the, the end result of um, all those um, hours of work um, and all that time patients have contributed in, in terms of those research um, ideas and projects. I found that research really provides a shared language, even if you are working with cl clinicians who are not researchers themselves, they really can understand what it is you're trying to solve in terms of the clinical problem. You often get to work with the most unlikely groups of people who would not necessarily otherwise be brought together, who share an interest to solve a particular issue, and that really brings a breadth of um, experience and um, networks that you wouldn't otherwise um, have access to if you were just practicing as a clinician. It really fosters clinical relationships to continue ongoing clinical care. Um, in, in palliative care, for example, we have had relationships in respiratory medicine, in renal medicine, um, in geriatric medicine, really to try and solve problems that um, are mutually um, important to different uh, disciplines or different uh, specialties. And research has really allowed us to articulate the, the cause for, for change. So just to give you a bit of insight in terms of my PhD story, it really did start from a curiosity at the bedside. I was seeing a lot of people with acute cognitive impairment in my clinical practice. It's a common problem in people with advanced illness. And when I was talking to my peers and my colleagues, especially as a trainee, the, the evidence that underpinned the way we approached clinical care really didn't resonate um, as being a solid evidence base to drive our, our practice. And I really then, after exploration, realised that antipsychotics had been used for delirium care for decades, including in cancer care without randomised control trial evidence. And it was at that time I undertook um, the ACORD workshop um, under, and really developed an interest in, in clinical trials. And it was that, um, I suppose, triangulation of that experience and also that curiosity that um, led me to do my PhD in that area. 
and it was the patient voice that really kept me going through that time that you know mental awareness is rated really highly by people with advanced illness it was a very difficult and challenging trial uh, to do um, there was a lot of pushback in terms of clinicians saying well this is the way we've um, cared for people with delirium for a long time it's effective and why do we need to challenge that status quo and it really um, opened my eyes to the collaborative effort um, in clinical research. I worked with aged care psychiatrists, uh, people in geriatric um, medicine and nursing, palliative care, pharmacologists, um, and also some basic scientists in terms of why um, people with delirium um, have such poor outcomes and can we understand the biological reason that drives uh, that. And no, it really um, helped me understand that delirium impacts all those disciplines and it um, really belongs to no one in terms of who is um, really driving a research um, agenda. And we were able from our results to really enact change at a policy uh, level and it was through that work we were able to put a submission to the Australian Commission on Safety, Quality and Healthcare um, and actually ensure that palliative care and um, cancer care were um, included within those standards and not um, just exempt as it had um, occurred before in terms of um, approaches to delirium care. So in terms of the challenges, I would summarise those as time, funding and the skills you need to be a, a clinical researcher. I think an ongoing struggle, and most clinician researchers, I think, would reflect that, is that you need some degree of compartmentalisation between your clinical work and your clinical research, um, and there's not necessarily a happy balance, and some weeks it just doesn't work. Um, but I think really garnering executive support to incl include research within your role and actually proactively talking about how um, that balance um, and what strategies that you can um, take to, to manage that um, is really um, important or it will feel um, like a push and pull situation that um, when you're in one place you're guilty that you're not doing the other and vice versa. Um, it's a challenge to find time and that sort of headspace to write grants while you're working full time um, as a clinician. Um, now, my experience has been more in the clinical trial space and I've really realised that I needed some small business skills to run a clinical trials unit um, effectively and I think it was through mentorship from some really experienced trialists that helped me understand that really early and, and reach out to learn those skills um, early on. And so thinking about the new skills and you know, discussing with people what those are because as clinicians you might not naturally or um, have had experience and training um, in some of these critical skills that you need to work in the clinical research environment. I think the challenge of clinical research and recruitment, regardless of the field of oncology research that you're doing, um, is always a challenge and I think is becoming increasingly um, complex. Um, and getting other clinicians who are not necessarily interested in research, um, who are really just beavering away, seeing patients and, and getting the, the clinical work done. Um, and sometimes um, the, the biggest challenges can be right in front of your nose in, in terms of the clinicians working within your own clinical area and investing in getting them on board and understanding the passion for the question um, can be um, a struggle, but is really worth um, the effort. And then I think, you know, if you speak to clinician researchers, many of them will have boxes of data or now um, files within um, their shared drives um, with lots of really rich data that finding time to actually write them up and um, ensure that they're available in the public domain um, is also um, a challenge. So what keeps me going in clinical research? I've been in this area for over 15 years. I think fundamentally it's about making difference for patients and families and I think also the challenge of answering questions which are really critical to our clinical practice but many people have said are not answerable within a research paradigm 
And I think the challenge of tackling those, knowing that it will make such a big difference to our patients and families if we actually can understand how to do things better and have robust research uh, to inform that. I think as a clinician researcher, you really have um, capacity to impact policy and advocacy, not purely just um, by the research you've done, but directly. Um, the clinicians are highly respected in policy discussions. We can bring our patient voices uh, to the table and we understand what policy actually influences our clinical practice because we're subject to those parameters in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. And so we have a lot of clarity around where the, the, the changes and pressure points are in that, in that field. I still find it's a highly collaborative and intellectually stimulating environment. And, and it's really refreshing to be mentoring the next generation of researchers through their PhDs. I think you know, the hands in, in their hands research in um, clinical areas in oncology and palliative care um, is going to stand us um, in good stead uh, for the future. And I think seeing patients with the clinical issues I'm researching really um, gives me focus that the, the research I'm doing is valuable and is going to make an impact when the results um, are available. So just in closing, the clinician research is always seeking opportunities to understand how we can do things better. And it might be hard, but I think we need to really remember for our patients it's not optional. Thank you.